Adobe Flash has got a zero-day remote code execution problem. That jackpotting thing? Yeah, it's officially happened in the United States and is autosploit just for noobs. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for February 6, 2018, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire, and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal as well. And now, on to the news. So the first story is all about Adobe Flash. Now, while Adobe Flash usage has been declining, browsers now block it. Adobe themselves stated that they would remove support completely by the end of 2020. That does not keep users from still keeping Flash installed, nor does it keep attackers from exploiting it. So last week, South Korea's CERT, which is the Computer Emergency Response Team, found a Flash Zero Day, which they called CVE 2018-4878, which Adobe is planning to patch in an update this week. The exploit exists in Adobe Flash Player 28.0.0.137 and earlier versions as well. And it could potentially allow an attacker to take control of a computer via remote code execution on platforms including Windows Mac, Linux, and even Chrome OS. This includes Adobe Flash Player desktop runtime and Google Chrome, Edge, and IE11. Now, according to Cisco Talos, an attacker had already used this exploit in a targeted attack by embedding a Flash SWF object inside of a Microsoft Excel document, which the target victim would open. Now, once they open it, the exploit begins execution and downloads additional payloads from a server. The download is a popular RAT, which is called a remote access Trojan that has been widely used by hacking groups. Talos points to a hacker group called Group 123, that's very creative, as the culprits. Now FireEye, which is another security company, points to a North Korean group called Temp Reaper as the culprits, though true attribution has yet to be determined. Now Adobe recommends admins implement Protected View for Office, and also mentions that Flash Player 27 adds the ability to change the behavior of the player. Another alternative is to simply disable or remove Flash if you are not using it. On January 30th, a security enthusiast on Twitter with the handle VectorSec released open source code for a tool called Autosploit. Now from the Twitter post, the tool is written in Python and uses the targeting of Shodan plus the easy to use Metasploit modules to create a very simple to use remote code execution. His code is available via GitHub. Now by automating the process, the tool requires little efficiency from the attacker themselves. The script that he wrote uses CLI and text to grab data from the Shodan database and the API. And if you don't know, Shodan is a search engine for open, internet-connected, Internet of Things devices, most notably like cameras. After finding open and accessible devices, Autosploit runs a command to start Metasploit. And if you are unfamiliar with Metasploit, check out Metasploit Minute on the Hack5 channel or hack5.org. Now, if an attacker does not want to choose one specific module out of Metasploit, they can also choose to direct all available modules at the device that they are attacking all at once. If the device is, in fact, vulnerable, they will have access via the remote code execution. Now, Autosploit does have its limits, though. According to Ars Technica, choosing your target is extremely limited functionality. The attacker would still need to understand what database is required to run Metasploit as well. VectorSec also recommends a VPS, since running a connection back to your computer might not necessarily be a good idea. Autosploit has received some backlash with words like script kitty being thrown about because of its very low barrier to entry. Some security researchers do not believe that it has any legitimate usage, though other security researchers disagree with this belief. I am a believer that education in theory behind any tool is a requirement for fully understanding how you can implement its usage in the real world, not just in a classroom or on tests. Many InfoSec tools over the years, including Metasploit, Shodan, Wireshark, Nmap, Maltigo, even the Wi-Fi Pineapple, have also received this kind of backlash, but they go on to become major parts of penetration tester toolkits, and some, like our very own Wi-Fi Pineapple, become notable tools for forensics and even get listed in the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Yes, that is a thing. Now, arguably, these tools also lower the barrier of entry associated with costs of working with pen testers because they save tons and tons of valuable time. 
so companies could be more likely to pay for security co compliance if the job can be done faster. So I think that the script kitty argument is only one side of a coin. Of course, I still advocate learning the theory to truly understand the value of the tool. Now there is a link in the show notes if you want to try the tool out for yourself. Last week, I had discussed a story about ATM jackpotting, where a thief uses hardware to force an ATM to spew at all sorts of cash until it is empty. This has been used worldwide, but it had not hit the United States. Well, according to Krebs on Security, this has happened in the United States, but it was not widely reported. In November of 2017, three Venezuelan men were arrested on drug charges after being pulled over because a cop smelled pot. It turns out that they had wads of cash as well as drugs, and they were also seen in surveillance videos messing with ATM machines in Wyoming, Colorado, and Utah. The, so they started with an ATM machine in Parker, Colorado in October, in which they used mobile phones and a small computer keyboard to make an ATM spew out $24,000. They later went on to hit ATMs in Utah. Investigators found the Plotus D malware on the ATM's hard drive. It turns out the Plotus D uses specific codes to generate cash, and these codes are sent to a third party, which is probably the crime boss, who then knows how much cash is in the ATM. He or she sends the codes back via mobile phone to the criminals at the ATM, who then enter the codes to withdraw the cash. Now, while this is not a new attack, as of November, it is new in the United States. Banks and ATM owners should restrict access to the ATM machines, update their software and or the hardware wherever possible, and be on the lookout for random hardware installed on the ATM. Thank you again to all of the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week and we are on the way to our next goal. We're super close now, which allows me to upgrade some of our equipment, but we will also open up a live video Q&A just for patrons each and every month. If you are already a patron, you get access to an audio RSS feed, first looks at the show topics and discussions just for patrons and a lot more. Any little bit helps us grow the show and hey, Check out these super cool fur babies as well, sent in by our patrons. I love checking them out every single week, so thank you so much for sending those in to me. Check out the perk levels as well on Patreon, and thanks again for keeping this show completely independent. And of course, if you cannot donate, you can hit that subscribe button, you can share this episode on your favorite social media page, and let me know, and I might even retweet you. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.